Hey, welcome back guys. Um, I've been having a few issues in the last few days around uh, setting up my gimbal and part of the issue that I came across was the fact that um, at one point I'd lost the bootloader on my Martinez board. So, you know, it, it's a typical board like this. This is the one out of Hextronics. It's a version 1 Martinez board. You know, you've got your drivers and your uh, chipsets and, and so forth for the processor and um, what I found I couldn't do is I couldn't load or connect my USB and then that that got me thinking that I've actually lost my bootloader. A bit of investigation into actually how to resolve that issue put me onto um, these two devices. So the way that you need to put um, a bootloader back onto an Atmel chip, um, in this case that's a, a, an Atmel 328P chip that they use um, on the Martinez board is to use one of these two devices. The one on the left is a USB ASP and the one on the right is a um, USB Tiny ISP. Um, fundamentally they do the same thing, they run their own serial protocol um, and they allow you to put a bootloader using the Adreno program back onto um, that Martinez board and that'll then allow you to reconnect that USB port so that you can flash your software back onto that board. So what's the difference between that and an FTDI you might be asking? Well, the, the fundamental difference between this and the FTDI, you can't use an FTDI to put a bootloader on the system. And the, the main crux of that is that the FTDI uses um, a serial protocol to do its communications where these devices have the serial communication protocol built in uh, to their own systems and that's why that's the fundamental difference between the two so what I'll do is um, we'll start to connect all these boards up to the um, Martinez board and we'll go from there and I'll show you how you can flash it So the first problem that I came across when I was trying to flash this device was that um, it wouldn't write and I couldn't understand why. And then I, then I realized after doing um, some tracing, so what I did was I jumped on the Atmel chip, which is the one over here, and I started looking at the ports um, and the specific pins for those ports and where they actually mapped. And what I found was that um, there was one obscure port that I needed, which was the MISO port um, and it was on a different pin header and of course it was labelled C4M. Um, it eluded me initially um, because I could never find the MISO port and I figured it was the culprit as to, to why I couldn't flash the board and um, yeah the subsequent tracing actually confirmed that the MSI port is actually on this pin header over here and the remainder of the other ports that we need are uh, over here, such as you know the reset and um, your MOSI port and uh, your ground and so forth. Um, so what I'll do is um, I'm going to take this diagram and we'll look at how that actually um, relates to the pinout out of these ports here, um, because that's your interface, which also provides your MISO and all the other ports um, that you need to connect to these ports over here and we'll go through the procedure of how they all hook up. I'm going to apologise up front. Um, I couldn't get this uh, USB uh, connected onto my um, laptop, which is a um, Apple machine uh, running uh, Windows under a VM. For whatever reason, I just couldn't get it to recognise the tiny ISP USB device. So what I've done is uh, I've just gone to a normal Windows 7 machine in my um, garage and uh, I have to just film everything um, so the quality isn't going to be as good as uh, screenshots but um, I think it'll get my point across. So the first thing we need to do is confirm the pinout um, on the tiny USB itself. So we know that we have two types of ports that we can use on the tiny USB. There was the 10 pin plug or the 6 pin so I want to use the 6 pin and in this orientation, um, if we look at, at the plug, 
the top and the bottom on the back side are the VCC in the ground. So I'll just um, put a multimeter on that and I'll just show you that that's the case. So I've gone ahead and plugged in the USB or the tiny USB here to my machine. So I've got 5 volts um, being outputted and on this unit itself I actually needed to um, enable this jumper over to the right here um, and that just outputs the 5 volts to these pins. So if we recall back to the previous um, uh, screenshot that I showed you, um, the, the two top pins either side would give us a ground and a 5 volt reference. So what I'll do is I'll just carefully check that uh, by touching the pins and we see there that we've got 5 volts. So now we know definitely the orientation for all of the MyZone MOSI ports and the 5 volts and the ground pins and the reset um, and the SCK pin as well that we need to pick up. So what we'll do is um, I'll start to put this together uh, according to my uh, sheet that I had before and it's just a matter of really matching port for port and I'll, um, then we can go ahead and do the flashing. So let's get it all connected. Okay, what we see here is um, I've grabbed a, a few cables that I've bought off the internet. Um, look, these are invaluable. Uh, I've, I use these all the time at the moment to connect pin headers and so forth, uh, to jumper across different things. And you know, um, I think I bought 10 of these out of uh, Pololu. Uh, sorry, I bought 50 of these out of Pololu for 10 US dollars, and uh, you know, well worth the investment. But I grabbed these um, cables and what I've done is I've put one row of headers on, on this side uh, which picks up everything from um, my 5 volts over to my RST port and then I've got an individual one which is for my MOZO port uh, which is a brown cable. So I've gone ahead and I did the 5 volts and I did the ground which we already picked up before. So that's uh, a white cable for 5 volts and my green cable for my um, ground plane. So now is a matter of grabbing the MOSI port. So that's my blue cable and looking at that, that's the pin across the um, way from the 5 volts. So that's the green and I need to grab the blue as I already forgot, and we'll add that to the pin across from the 5 volts. The next is the SCK which is um, the orange cable and SCK is right next to the pin I just put in. So we'll just add that. Uh, RST which is the next port on here is the yellow cable and the RST is the port next to the SCK on the pin header. Okay, and the last port we need to put is the MISO port, which is this individual brown cable over here. And it should go to the port in between the VCC and the ground that we had put in first. So I'll just go and connect that. All right, so now what we have is our system is all cabled up so that we've got our interface connected into our input jumpers on on the uh, Martinez control board. Um, our 5 volts will, for the board will be fed from this device itself and the USB and now all we need to do is do the connection into the uh, computer itself and doing the file transfer of the bootloader using um, the Arduino uh, software program. So we'll uh, We'll do that next. Okay, I've connected up the uh, tiny USB and under devices and printers um, you'll see here that we've actually got it uh, connected. So if we look at the properties on that device itself you'll see that it's uh, got the driver loaded but because it's a it's not a uh, serial device you won't never see a uh, communication port allocated to it. It's just because the device itself will provide the serial um, through the uh, the connection that we've done. Um, that's the major difference. You know, it doesn't use the VCP drivers um, to provide a, a serial port 
using the hardware within your computer. It's, it's all inbuilt to the device itself. Uh, so we have the, the tiny USB device uh, plugged in. It's all still connected as previously to the um, unit itself as we did before. And now it's a matter of we'll just kick off Adreno uh, to do the uh, connection to, well sorry, to, to load the bootloader. Um, one thing that you need to do is under tools you need to set the programmer type that you're using. So in this case uh, there's six programmers that are available here. Um, because I'm using the USB tiny ISP we select that and all we need to now do is um, to burn the bootloader is go to burn bootloader. And that takes um, a little while to do this. Uh, it's just a matter of just waiting. This is what it looks like when the bootloader has been burnt. Um, there's no flashing lights in this case, but uh, we do have a visual output over here. Uh, the bootloader just finished burning and you can see that uh, the visual indication light has gone out uh, saying that it's not busy anymore. Uh, that's the only indication that I can find other than the program itself telling you that it's burning the bootloader. And there we go, the bootloader's done burning. Uh, that's all there is to uh, flashing the bootloader to uh, a board. Um, I mean, this can actually be used to flash bootloaders to any of the Atmail boards, um, especially if they provide uh, a interface to those um, MOSI, MISO, um, that's master out slave in and, and vice versa and the SCK and reset pins and uh, you can power the board um, so I hope that was useful uh, and if you do find my tutorials useful please subscribe I appreciate it thank you